Last year I made the Pirates Guide to PvP, but a lot of things have changed since then. We have received new ships, new modules, nano cores, and of course the April balance patch did change a lot. Now one thing that is still the same, as you can see I still fly expensive ships, I think that's one thing that will never change. I love to fly faction ships and so far I have really been enjoying them. Now uh, I will show you the builds on my three main PvP cruisers and I can tell you back a year ago I used to fit my ships only for DPS. Now uh, I actually prefer a more tanky build because with a good tank you can engage a lot more ships and you don't have to worry about uh, easily going down. Now the Stratius has a very nice bonus on armor resistance, drone damage and drone control range. I have dual armor repairs, dual medium armor repairs on this ship. The rigs are focused on armor resistance and armor repair. This is basically how uh, I build most of my PvP cruisers. They are all tanky. I have only uh, one DPS PvP cruiser currently and that is the Ortus, while the other two are focused on tank. And so far uh, I have been really happy with the tanky approach to PvP, it works really well and I was able to engage and destroy a lot more targets than using only a DPS build. Now, uh, it's also very important that you know the stats of your ship, important to know basically the skill parallel bonuses on all ships that you engage as well as the ships that you fly. It can be really helpful uh, to decide the right build for the right target. And here you can take a look at the uh, Stratius bonuses. Overall, they are really nice. Now, the next ship that I will show you uh, is the Ashimu. Now, this Ashimu is not my super expensive one. This Ashimu is basically the cheap one that I fly. And this ship is also focused on tank, in this case, a shield tank. Very important to know uh, to pick the right tank for your ship. Some ships can do both a shield and armor tank, while some ships are better shield tanks than armor tanks and of course the other way around. And the Ashimo can do both a armor and shield tank. In my case uh, I still like the shield tank a lot. And the third main PvP cruiser for me is the Ortus. Now this ship is focused only for DPS. I did have several different variations of this ship with a tanky build, semi-tanky build and a uh, DPS build. I like to fly this ship as a DPS ship. It has pretty good DPS but the tank on the Ortus is not the best. Now if you go with a full tank build then you have to find a way to avoid taking damage and with the Ortus you avoid taking damage by orbiting at 40-45 kilometers from your target. At that distance not many ships will do a lot of damage to you and so far that's been working really really well. So uh, time to show you the nano cores. Now I personally only use blue nano cores, sometimes the green nano cores and I have a couple of the purple ones. You have orange, purple, blue and uh, green nano cores. They have the orange and purple ones have a primary and secondary attribute while the blue and the green ones only have a primary attribute. And in most cases I personally don't go for the secondary attributes, the primary one is more than enough. And I would tell you from my personal experience, it's not really not really necessary that you go with uh, nano cores. You can use the ship even without them, it works still really well. However, the stat increases are nice and if you uh, want the extra performance out of your ship, then you can easily uh, go and get the green and blue nano cores on the market. Now some of them are special edition and some of them are rare so you might see that some of them are expensive while other ones are cheap. Overall if you want to uh, get one of these nano cores then they should be available on the market and I personally use only blue nano cores on my primary PvP cruisers. I plan to get a purple one on the Ortus, uh, not on the Ortus but on the on the Stratius because why not, uh, I really like the Stratius and would be fun to see how it will perform with a nano core. And of course most ships have a nano core so if you like to fly cruisers then you can get a nano core for the, for the cruisers or frigates or 
battleships or battlecruisers. Now you can get purple and of course from the Concord Pass, which is farmable very easily. And uh, currently we have the Ascension and of course. I have couple for my battleships, although I prefer uh, a tank primary primary attribute and on the Belgorn I use uh, the tank build. So, uh, time to show you the new module. We have received the scanners. The blue scanner is for PvE, basically with the blue scanner you can, sc you can scan sites, wormholes, nihilus sites, dead space sites and things like that. With the narrow scanner you scan ships and this is the most fun scanner out of the two scanners and well uh, the status has a bonus on scan radius it's important that you have a very small minimum scan radius that way you can scan a lot of ships without notifying them and the scanners did change the game a lot basically you can use the modules to find ships running missions you can find ships in no space basically where there is a ship in space you can scan it and that did change the game quite a bit it made the game a lot uh, a lot more serious because there was pvp everywhere so uh, how do you scan targets and how do you engage now i personally like to use one ship for for scanning and engaging when i do solo pvp or i can use the astro to scan and scout the target and then I go pick up the DPS ship and I warp back. Basically what you do is you scout the target, you find the perfect warp pin, then you go back to the station, pick the DPS ship, go to the closest warping point and then you warp at the approximate distance to the target. And then of course you have the element of surprise and you can easily engage the target and most don't expect uh, that to happen. But uh, it does happen quite often. And now I would like to show you a couple examples of how we blast ships. Now our first target will be uh, a Balgorn. And I did pick the Balgorn for a very specific reason. The Balgorn is one of the most hard to kill ships in the game. And I would say definitely in the top 3 of the scariest ships in all EVE. Now you have to know that the, that the Balgorn and overall all Blood Raider ships have a very terrifying bonus on Nosferatus and Neutralizers as well as webs. So uh, when you engage a Balgorn don't get within the web, Neutralizer and Nosferatu range. If that happens you most likely will lose your ship. So I warped at long range, did set orbit at 43-44 kilometers and now I will move into the optimal orbiting distance for this ship, which is around 45-43 kilometers. At this range, the Balagorns, Nosferatus, Webs and Neutralizers will not have a good effect on the Ortus. And of course, uh, I have one tracking disruptor, because if the Balagorn has a tracking computer, then it can hit your ship at this range. Now, and this is how uh, I deal with Belgorns. Basically, you stay away from the webs, you stay away from the neutralizers, and the capacitor of that ship will slowly deplete itself because it will not have uh, enough range to apply full Nosferatu and neutralizer performance. And in this case, uh, the Belgorn is busy with another ship, so I can afford to orbit a little bit closer, and as you can see, the Belgorn is going down. And they have been destroyed. That was a nice kill. Now let me uh, burn away from the site. And I will show you the kill. After you destroy your target. I recommend that you burn away from the center of the mission. And uh, to be aligned. Just in case. Because you never know what can happen. Now let me show you the Balgorn kill. 5.5 billion. Not bad. Here you can take a look at the build of that ship, triple webs, yeah, I definitely don't want to get webbed by a Balgorn, no thanks, I'd rather stay at my safe 45 km distance from that monster. 
Now, uh, that's one way how you can deal with a Balgorn. Another way is to bring a fleet. If you already have to go within the Neutralizer and Nosferatu, as well as web range of the Blood Raider ship, then you might as well bring a whole fleet to engage the Balgorn. Now in this case we have two fleets, uh, there is one Vaxor Sniper, one Raven and the Balgorn. Of course, the Balgorn is the primary target here, and they can tank a lot of damage. Balgorns are extremely tanky, but if you apply enough DPS, the tank will be of course broken. And that's one of the safest ways how you deal with that ship. You bring a fleet, you have a logistic ship, a ship that will interfere with the Balgorn's weapons, and it becomes a easy kill. The Balgorn is after all one of the scariest ships in the game. And I personally really like that ship, so I know what it can do and what it can do. The Balgorn is one of those battleships that can easily engage a Dreadnought or Carrier. A Balgorn fleet can be terrifying, because they can kill the capacitor of a capital ship within one minute. And a capital ship without a cap is pretty much very dead. And that was a nice kill as well. 6 billion isk was that Balgorn. Now, the Balgorn is not the most common ship that you will find in the game. The most common faction battleship is the Rattlesnake. Now, the Rattlesnake has a bonus on missiles, large missiles, and has a bonus on large drones, which makes the Rattlesnake vulnerable to small ships. Now, when you engage a Rattlesnake, uh, I recommend that, you sh that, your, that your ship goes around 3.5, 3.6 kilometers per second. That way, uh, you can maximize the ship for DPS because the Rattlesnake will not be able to apply any damage uh, on your ship. Now the next target is uh, a Rattlesnake, I am with the Ortus. Now I warped at 64 kilometers away from the Rattlesnake and now uh, I am moving into optimal orbiting distance which will be at 37 kilometers. When you engage other ships, you can afford to uh, go a little bit closer in case uh, that your ship decides to go out of the point range. In the case of the Rattlesnake, I don't have to worry about the large drones reaching me. They are too slow and they will not uh, be able to catch with, with my ship, so I can easily orbit at this range and keep on shooting at the Rattlesnake. Now, uh, it's important to know that a Rattlesnake can be very tanky, so when you engage one of these ships, be prepared for a very, very long and uh, very tough battle. Not tough because you will be taking damage, but tough because you have to be careful at the local, and you have to be careful uh, not to get webbed and scrambled by the other storyline ships. The Rattlesnake is one of the easiest kills that you can find with the Ortus, because the Ortus is just super fast and it can easily, it can easily outmaneuver the drones. When I say that you have to watch the local, uh, maybe the Rattlesnake can call for help, maybe other ships can interfere with your operation, that's basically the thing that you have to be careful around. This Atlasnik is slowly going down, they did send the drones after me, but as you can see, the large drones are behind me and uh, they don't have enough speed to catch this ship. This works with 
all ships. You can do the same thing with the RB cover tops. You can you, you can do the same thing with the bellicose cover tops. It's important that your ship has enough speed, and uh, it's important that you keep range from the from the rattlesnake. Now you have to be careful around neutralizers. Basically, neutralizers are one of the highest threats to your cruiser because they can deplete the capacitor of your ship very, very quickly. Now, this is also where uh, Viortus will shine because uh, it can orbit outside of the neutralizer range on most ships. And that makes this ship one of the best hunting cruisers, one of the best solo hunting cruisers. And one of the reasons why uh, I fly this ship. You can do the same thing with the other cover tops cruisers as well, and you can do the same thing with the other faction cruisers, but the Ortus has uh, that range advantage. Basically, one of the traits of the ship is being able to point targets at a long range. That's one of the main attributes for Mordu ships. Now, as for the Rattlesnake, Gurista pirate ships are focused on tank, missile damage and drone damage. In the case of the Rattlesnake, well, that doesn't help because fast ships will kill the Rattlesnake without a problem. And I have several builds on the Rattlesnake that are very lethal. So far, they've been working really well. I know a lot of players who use the build that are very, very happy with it. And uh, I'm also very happy to hear that. This rattlesnake slowly going down. They are into around 35-40% shield. And also, one of the goals when you are fighting a ship like this is to kill their own capacitor. Now, how do you kill the capacitor of your target without a neutralizer? Or if you are not flying a blood raider ship? Basically, you force them to use the shield repair, the shield booster, until they don't have any capacity left, and then they become a very easy target. That's what I'm talking about, outlasting the target. It also works if you uh, are fighting at medium to long range, because you will not be taking any damage, but the target will be taking damage. And of course, they will have to repair, and as they do so, their capacitor will slowly go down, and this is the case with this very tanky Rattlesnake. I have to admit, this is one very tanky Rattlesnake. A very, very tanky Rattlesnake. You can also scan your surrounding area while you are fighting with the target, just to check and see if there are ships approaching you. How would you know if there is a ship warping towards you? Well, when you scan, if the distance of the signal is actually decreasing, if they're actually approaching you, then that means uh, that there is an incoming ship. It's one of the tricks that uh, I use quite often to verify if uh, we have ships coming towards our home system. And so far, it's been working really well with almost 100% success rate. Now the Rattlesnake is in very low shield. They definitely have a reactive shield hardener. Or couple of them. Actually, you can't have couple reactive shield hardeners. You can only have one with multiple adaptives. Also, very important that uh, you know what kind of build your target will use. I usually, when I usually scout the target, I take a look at the effects on their ship, and then I can figure out if they have one adaptive or multiple adaptives, if they are, are a shield or armor tank, or if they are a sniper or full DPS. That's one of the things that you can do uh, while you are scouting the target before you engage. It's one of the things that will help you at deciding the right build for the target. I like to adapt my builds to, uh, to each new target. 
or when I roam, when I do a solo roam like this with the Ortus, then I like to uh, have 3 points and 1 scanner. Of course, you can design the build uh, as you like, basically use the build that makes you comfortable. In my case, uh, I like to use this build, seems to be uh, very effective uh, at dealing with faction ships. And overall, uh, I'm quite satisfied with the Ortus. Now, it's also important to know uh, to avoid ships that might be uh, a counter to your ship. For example, with the Ortus, with this build, I avoid to engage small ships, interceptors, frigates, ships like that, because I don't have a way to slow them down to uh, make the missile application, the missile damage application, even better. So, it's really important to know uh, the ships that you can engage and the ships that you can't. With the current build on this ship, uh, I engage cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. That's basically my uh, my target. And so far, with the Ortus, I have very very good success rates in engaging the battleships. I have a couple of fails, of course. Did lose uh, one Ortus recently because uh, I made a I made a fatal mistake of warping towards the wrong. Uh, wrong anomaly. Basically, the idea was to make the small fleet jump towards our Raven Striker, where we would uh, send more ships, but I warped to uh, a different anomaly, not in the anomaly where the Raven was, and of course uh, I got caught, and of course the ship was destroyed. But it happens. So, uh, not a not a big problem really. Now the Radasnik is into low hull. The fight is slowly coming to an end. The Radasnik has one target painter and dual and dual Nosferatus, or maybe dual neutralizers. But at this range, the neutralizers will not have a, a good effect on my ship, so I am not worried about the capacitor. I also have one capacitor battery that helps a lot. One more hit and the Radasnik will be destroyed and nice. That fight was very enjoyable and that was a that was a nice kill. So uh, that's how you deal with a Radasnik if you are flying uh, a fast long range cruiser. That's one of the tactics that I use and this is one of the tactics that uh, I personally really like to to use with this ship, basically no tank, but you have very high velocity and you can avoid incoming damage by being faster than the weapon system of your target. Basically speed tanking, in this case uh, speed tanking while literally taking no damage. Highly efficient! Now uh, let me go and take the wreck, once you destroy the target if there is a uh, storyline ship that can carry a scrambler or neutralizer, I would say destroy it, because you never know what can happen. I don't have a stab, I don't have stabs on this ship, so I have to be extra careful. And once the loot has been collected, I will take range and I will wait out the timer. That's basically what uh, I like to do. Of course, if you have a cover top ship, then Warp you can easily active. cloak and you can easily uh, wait out the timer while being cloaked. Now, uh, let's go to the next ship. This is the Ashimu. Now, how I engage ships with the Ashimu? This ship doesn't have uh, a doesn't have high DPS. Doesn't have very good speed. But the Ashimu is very, very tanky. Now, when I engage ships with the Ashimu, uh, I mostly run beam lasers. I orbit at 25, 27 kilometers, basically within the optimal range of the webs and uh, within the range of the one point. And with the Ashimu, besides the speed tank working a little bit, you will engage the targets with a tanky build with a shield or armor tank, depends of uh, your preference, in my case it's the shield tank. And the goal with the Ashmo is to outlast the target. Now, Blood Raider ships have a 
terrifying bones on Nosferatu's Nutradis webs. So they are practically masters of endurance in a fight. As long as your target has capacitor, your ship will have capacitor. And your target will run out of capacitor before your ship does. And that's where you kill them. Basically, doesn't matter if, you t your, if your target is tanky, doesn't matter if uh, your target is a battleship, battlecruiser, cruiser, it doesn't matter. The Blood Raider ships will kill the capacitor on all ships in the game. And that makes them terrifyingly good. That's basically uh, how I fly the Ashimo. The good tank on this ship allows me to tank for a very, very long time. Now, while having a good tank is most likely going to ensure uh, a good victory or a good kill, you still have to be careful because there are some battleships that can be uh, difficult to engage. For example, the Vindicator can be difficult if you accidentally go within the web range. The Balgorn can be very difficult. Basically, you don't engage a Balgorn with the Ashmo, and I will show you, uh, of course, why that's the case. The Ashmo is practically one of the best ships that you can use for 1v1s. The stats and bonuses will ensure that you have the total control on the on the battlefield. Now, here uh, I am going to engage a Balgorn, and again, uh, I did say that it's not a good idea to do this with the Ashimu. If you have to engage a Balgorn, then go and uh, use a long range ship. This will be a good example of why you don't go within the web range of that thing. Now here, I did set the orbit at 30 kilometers because I know damn well that uh, that thing can kill me if I go too close. So the orbit is at 30 kilometers, just within the range of the point, although the orbit is still not perfectly circular. So uh, we'll have to uh, orbit a little bit longer in order to achieve that perfect, perfect circle orbit. Now the Belgon slowly uh, going down. The Nosferatu does have the does have this range, so if the Balgorn decides to shoot me, I will have to warp away. Or uh, I might not warp away, but I will maintain the orbit if they can hit. Basically, the optimal range on the Balgorn is around 34 kilometers, so I'm in the optimal range. But the lasers aren't the main problem. The main problem is the, the webs and the neutralizers, as well as Nosferatus. Seems like they are shooting at me and looks like they are not able to hit, that's good. They are slowly, slowly going down. The Ashimo can deal very well with missile ships. It can fight with ships with railguns with lasers and with turrets. Ashmu is one of the tankiest faction cruisers that we have in the game. Now here I made the fatal mistake where I actually went a little bit uh, too close to the Belgorn and they decided to uh, shoot at me. Which, of course, I should have seen coming, but uh, I wasn't aware that I accidentally went in the web range of that thing. And now the Balgorn has enough uh, webs on me and, of course, enough DPS to shred my shield, to shred my armor. But, thankfully, uh, the Balgorn was destroyed. And this is why you don't go within the web range of a Balagorn, because things like this happen in a blink of an eye, just like that. And of course, that was a very good kill mail, 16 billion, nice. One of the tastiest Balagorns that I've seen so far. Now, uh, let's go to the 
Next ship, this is the Stratius. Warp drive active. The Stratius is one of the newest ships that I started to use as my main PvP cruiser. And this ship is excellent for stealth operations. The Stratius can engage targets immediately after you decloak your ship. And that makes it one of the one of the most unique Cordop screws in the game. You can actually launch Sino with this ship, although I really do not want to launch Sino with a Stratius. It's uh, it's a little bit too expensive for, for for that job. Now our target here is a Raven Striker, and here uh, I will show you uh, an example of neutralizers, what they can do to your ship, and of course uh, I will show you how the Stratius works. Now, I will orbit at 25 kilometers. The Stratius, while being very slow, it still can speed tank a lot of missiles. And the Raven Striker isn't quite known to have very good damage application. Uh, so, uh, if the Raven is into the siege mode, then the damage done on my ship will be, will be minimal. So, uh, I will maintain the 25 km orbit, will orbit uh, around that ship, and I will apply uh, my points, missiles, and drones on that ship. Now, as you can see, that Raven is quite, quite tanky. It's slowly going down. We have one Phantasm and one Stratus currently on the, on the grid. Now the Raven has decided to make me the primary target. That's good, because the Phantasm has more points at the moment. And I will try to hold as long as I can. There is one more cruiser on the way. We have one more Ortus warping in. Cruisers are practically perfect for a low sec roam. They have the... They have practically the best maneuverability and DPS balance. They can, they can take damage. But also, they can do a lot of damage, and overall they're quite maneuverable, they're fast, which makes them excellent for quick operations, for moving around and things like that. You can use battleships, but I personally don't really like to use a battleship in low sec. They're slow, they're practically bricks, so uh, that's why I usually fly in cruisers. Now this Raven Striker uh, is destroy my capacitor but they're not doing too much damage to my armor so I will warp away we'll warp uh, drive active. try to lose interest we'll try to make the Raven Striker lose interest in the Stratius now I will I will return my armor has been repaired now the Raven is focusing on another ship it should give me enough time to turn around and warp back of course I will cloak drive because active. just in case if the raven decides to call for help which is of course very very possible the ortus is on the on the field so we have even more points on the Raven Striker. This is how you engage battleships with a cruiser fleet. Basically you have one tackle and a bunch of DPS or all ships can also have tackle and DPS. In this case it works really well. The Raven Striker is now into hull. They did hold very well. That's an impressive tank on that ship. The Raven Striker is one of the tankiest Striker battleships, so you also uh, again need to know what the ships you engage can do. In our case we did expect the ship to be super tanky and we did prepare our ourselves for a tanky target and as you can see we are shooting down the tanky target. The Raven Striker has been destroyed. Nice. Now I'll go pick up the loot. 
It's always nice to share the loot with your teammates. It adds to the teamwork, it adds to the overall experience in EVE. And I personally really love the teamwork that we do. It's uh, it's very fun. That's all I have to say. It's very fun to to fly with uh, a group of pirates. Warp we all active. enjoy the PvP and hunting that we do. Now uh, that was the battleship target with the Stratus. Now let me show you the kill. Two point two billion. Not bad. Overall, a very solid solid fit on that ship. That one neutralizer, as you could see, did do a very good job at eliminating my own capacitor. I had, I have one large Nosferatu that did help me with the capacitor, but still, the neutralizer would eventually deplete my capacitor, and I would, I would not be able to Warp repair drive active. this ship. And for some reason, I did uh, warp into. Uh, Warp drive empty active. space. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Okay, let's go to the next target. We have, I think, we have another rattlesnake. Yep, we have another rattlesnake. Excellent. The, the status can be used as a support ship. And it can also be used as a tackle ship, or it can be used as a DPS ship. It all uh, depends from the situation. In my case, uh, I like to use this ship as a tackle. So far, that's been working really well, and I really don't have uh, don't really have anything uh, to say with the performance on the Stratos. It works really well. Still, don't have a nano core on this. I will go into the optimal orbiting distance of this rattlesnake. Sometimes your target will be a little bit less tanky than the usual targets that you can engage. In the case of rattlesnakes, they can be both tanky, but at the same time they also can lack the tank. It all depends from the pilot. And I forgot to mention, but one very important um, aspect that you have to focus on, in low sec at least, your main enemy would be the warp core optimizers, the stabs. All the ships in low sec are heavily, heavily stabbed, so uh, you will have to have enough points to hold the target. And this is where the teamwork uh, will work really, really well. You can have your fleet be equipped with a bunch of scramblers, points, and of course you can have some ships use webs just in case uh, if there is something small that needs to be slowed down, and that way you don't have to worry about any target warping away from you. And that was a very nice uh, rattlesnake kill. With cover top ships you can wait out the criminal timer uh, once you cloak and of course warp away. With other ships that can't cloak, you burn away from the mission or you warp around uh, the anomalies or you can actually wait out the timer inside of a inquisitor of or scout anomaly if they are clear. And here you can take a look at the kill on that ship, it's actually really nice. Not bad loot. Now uh, let's. Now let me show you something very fun. Warp drive active. Here we have two Caracal navies that I am warping to with the with the Stratius. Now since this is Eve, uh, basically you have to be ready for basically anything. Now. We have two Caracal navies, and uh, those two ships have the chance to actually uh, defeat my Stratius. Warp so drive active. Uh, I will now go and find the perfect warp in, 
And now I will warp back at a approximate close range distance to the targets. Now why do I say that these two ships can defeat uh, my Stratus? They don't need to destroy my ship to win. Uh, they win if they make me warp away. And since the Stratus is a ship that relies on drones as the main source of DPS, if they focus on my drones, then if I run out, if I run out of drones, I basically have to go, and uh, I basically active. have to warp out because I would probably not have enough DPS to destroy the two ships with only my missiles. So uh, warping back to the mission, and I will engage the first. Caracal Navy. You always have to uh, be ready for a fight. Doesn't matter what ship you are engaging. You never know what can happen. These two ships can very well be bait ships. So let's see what happens. Now uh, the primary is uh, that Caracal Navy. Drones are out. They have been pointed. Now in the case of these two ships, I don't expect them to have stabs, so in order to prevent them from warping away, I will uh, I will apply one point on one Caracal Navy each, because I conveniently have two points on this ship. The first Caracal is slowly going down, they are actually repairing the shield quite well. Although I am going through the tank of that ship, now they are into armor. Uh, they are shooting at... Well, they're not shooting at me. And that means they are most likely shooting at my drones. Which, yep, that's the case. They are shooting at my drones. Time to pull the drones back to uh, lose the aggression on the drones, the Caracal Navy is in low shield and low armor. I did lose one drone and this is where uh, flying drone boats can be a little bit frustrating because once they start killing your drones you have to keep sending drones out from your drone bay and that can draw your attention from the fight to the, to the drones which in return can lead to some mistakes. Now thankfully uh, I am quite used to this. I actually lost more in drones than in ships which is kinda hilarious because for some reason everyone likes to kill my drones. So uh, I lost the second drone and I'm launching, I'm launching the next one that I have in my drone bay. The first caracal is uh, going down, now I will focus on the next caracal have well I lost one more drone so let's launch let's launch one more if you're flying drone boats it's very important that you have a lot of drones in the drone bay just in case if your target starts to kill your drones I know it's really really annoying uh, when they start killing your drones and that's one of the reasons why I don't fly uh, drone boats that often because of things like this where they start killing your drones and then you have to focus on releasing drones all the time so uh, that can be a little bit difficult but with time you would get used to that so now uh, I have a mess in my uh, module slots but that's okay now I have all four drones on the first page so if any of these drones starts taking damage I can pull them back once the drone is pulled back uh, I will immediately send them back out again that way they lose the aggression and uh, they can uh, go back fighting so far the caracal doesn't seem to be interested in my drones but i know that's famous last words there, there we go the valkyries start taking damage i will orbit at 19 kilometers to be a little bit closer to the ship the other Caracal Navy has returned, well, they have returned not in a Caracal Navy, but they came back to pick up the loot while I'm busy with fighting 
the other Caracal, they are into armor. Now when I have all four drones split in this way, I can pull them back. I can pull the one drone back that's actually taking damage. So uh, I can save them from getting destroyed. And that seems to be working really well so far. The Caracal is using a Nosferatu, but that did not help them because their ship was destroyed. So this is uh, why you have to be very careful even when you are engaging ships that seem to be a easy target because you never know what they can do. So, uh, with that being said, hope that this little guide and this little, uh, I guess, kind of a tutorial uh, does help you and uh, I did uh, try to cover most of the tactics and fits that I use. Basically the fits that you see here are my primary main PvP fits that I use for most of my ships, if not all of my ships. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask me down in the comments, I'll be sure to answer all of them. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.